Welcome back to this special edition of Showdown. I'm joined by my co-host, former Labor leader Mark Latham, and joining us on the panel to discuss the US presidential election upcoming on the 6th of November or the 7th of November in Australia, former Labor Senator Stephen Loosley, also a former president of the Australian Labor Party, and Tom Switzer, the editor of the Distinguished Spectator magazine and also a research associate at the US Study Centre at Sydney University. Firstly to you, Stephen Loosley. Um, we've got three months until the election, thereabouts. Um, how do you see it at present? A little, little bit less than uh, that now, Michael. I, I think uh, if you were a, a betting person, you'd want to uh, be saying that uh, the President and the Democrats have opened up something of a lead, uh, both in the battleground states and, uh, and overall. Uh, it's, it's not a particularly uh, comfortable or convincing lead, nor should it be, given the state of the US economy. But I still think uh, Governor Romney and the uh, Republicans have got the job in front of them in terms of defining uh, their campaign. They've permitted the Democrats to do that. And as a consequence, uh, Barack Obama's uh, vote appears much more solid. If you look at realclearpolitics.com, which is the best summary of American polls overall of intending voters, uh, they have uh, uh, the Obama-Biden ticket sitting on uh, around about 220 to 240 electoral college votes. The, uh, the Romney-Ryan tickets lagging on around 190 electoral college votes of, of, of probable gains. The Where key, do they have Ohio? That's of course the Eden Monero, the Eden Monero of American it politics. Is, it is, the last nine or ten occasions. It's, uh, it's been the state that's uh, chosen the uh, president in terms of pick the, the winner uh, outright. But uh, at the moment uh, Florida is, uh, is still in play, North Carolina, Virginia, uh, Ohio uh, in play, Nevada is in play, uh, Iowa uh, is in play. Uh, all of those uh, are going to uh, go down to the wire in all mm. likelihood. Mm. But from the Romney uh, perspective, you'd want more of those in the camp at this mm. uh, stage to be, uh, to be a better place for the run home. Mm. Tom Switzer? Yeah, I agree with a lot of what Stephen said. I think that uh, perhaps the kindest thing that could be said about Mitt Romney is low expectations is a priceless political asset. Uh, but of course, six weeks is a long time. Not if politics. they're not exceeded, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, look, he has been bedeviled by a series of uh, agaffes and missteps, no question about it. But as Stephen concedes, uh, it's not an insurmountable gap. And the circumstances can change very quickly, especially when you bear in mind that there are three presidential debates in the first part of October, first half of October. So I don't think he should be written off. Many politicians six weeks out before a federal election have been in convincing leads only to lose them. This is far from convincing, although I readily concede that Obama does have a pretty decent lead in some of those battleground states, particularly Ohio and Virginia. If you're advising uh, Mitt Romney, um, what does he need to do? Well, I think the problem for Romney is that he just comes across as very in inauthentic. He just lacks uh, conviction, uh, policy nous, um, and empathy. I'm not sure what you can do to um, fix up those problems. But what he should do, of course, is just highlight how bad things are in America. I mean, by rights, Barack Obama should be on the ropes. Mm. I mean, you've got 8.1% unemployment. The recession ended more than three years ago. And it's the most sluggish economic recovery since the Great Depression. Uh, the debt mountain is of Himalayan proportions. It's increased by more than trillion dollars every year of the Obama presidency. And all the available evidence suggests that Americans are in a very foul mood. They think their country, by margins of nearly 70%, mm. is heading in the wrong direction. Mm. So I think that Obama should really be on the back foot and uh, Romney has a good chance of highlighting those uh, flaws. Mark Latham, you've just spent three weeks in uh, America uh, touring around. Uh, what sense do you get of, of the campaign? Yeah, I don't share the view that Americans are in a foul mood and, and I was fascinated by some of the opinion polling that came out in the past fortnight showing that many more Americans are optimistic about where the US economy will be 12 months from now than pessimistic. So if there's a general expectation the economy is likely to get better, it really minimises the case for change. In terms of the uh, existing economic uh, problems, which have been severe, I'm not too sure Obama gets the blame. Most people looking at the global financial crisis, the meltdown, uh, would more likely apportion blame to uh, uh, President uh, George W. Bush and the, the Republicans. Uh, I think uh, the, Re the Democrats were very effective in using Bill Clinton at their convention to say, well, look, um, the, the problems that were caused by financial deregulation and big um, uh, upper-class uh, tax cuts, uh, the Republicans just want to repeat those errors. So Clinton's intervention, I think, was very effective. And the main thing about Romney, I think, is not just the question of authenticity, it's a question of competence. 
I mean, what sort of person goes on a goodwill visit to the London Olympics in the, in the days leading up to the opening ceremony and ends up being denounced by Boris Johnson uh, in Hyde <laughs> Park at the concert, uh, launching the uh, festivities? What sort of person uh, in, in seeking high elected office um, makes a partisan point at a, motion, uh, at a moment of national mourning when they had that tragedy at the uh, US Embassy in Libya? And what sort of uh, politician writes off 40% of the electorate Automatically, I've never heard 47 percent of the electorate. Mm. I've never heard of a mentality like this mm. in that uh, tape that came out with Romney addressing what was supposed to be a private fundraising dinner. So I think Romney's got a series of problems on a number of fronts, and I, I, I really do think it's it's very unlikely that he can, that he can win in November. Still, Stephen, if you go back to Obama's campaign and his election, he offered hope and change. And we've got to say whether we like him or not, he's one of the great speech makers of the modern era. But so many of his speeches were so full of what I think was empty rhetoric. This was a man who's promised way beyond his capacity to deliver. Um, is that a problem for him? Does Obama have to, you know, yes, ha is. have a big, a big second-term agenda? Because don't most people in America feel that there's a sense of disappointment with the Obama presidency? I, I'm not sure most people uh, believe that. Uh, the Obama campaign is going to uh, have difficulty in engaging Americans, uh, uh, particularly young Americans, who are so enthusiastic uh, for change in 2008 again. Mm. The signs are that they're able to mobilise very effectively in the, uh, in the battleground states, though, Michael. They're much better organised in technical terms than in terms of volunteers in the states. Uh, so th there are people disappointed in the uh, president, the administration. That's true. Although the, uh, the unofficial Democratic campaign slogan was actually used by Vice President Biden at the convention in, in, uh, in uh, Charlotte, where he said... Uh, General Motors is alive and Osama bin Laden is dead. Mm -hmm. And reduced to the core, I mean, mm -hmm. the D Democrats are often campaigning it's on a good that. Line. Could, could I just make the point, though, that we're looking at November 6, but there's a lot of Americans already voting now. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in a number of uh, uh, states, that vote will get into double digits. It'll be reflected in the count uh, on November 6. But a lot of Americans now are thinking about uh, Governor Romney's comments at Boca Raton, to which Mark uh, referred, where he essentially wrote off 47% of the U.S. Uh, uh, electorate. There, there's an I interesting report that um, uh, uh, when he was looking uh, to run for president uh, last time, prior to 2008, uh, Romney was asked at the Wall Street Journal how he would constitute his cabinet, how he'd choose his cabinet. His reply was, I think I'd get McKenzie's in. <laughs> now, you, you, have to ask yourself, would a, you have to ask yourself, would a politician actually say that? Mm. It's more like a CEO. You'd have to get two quotes at least, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two, yeah the amazing two, thing two or three. Right, uh, Stephen, is that uh, we tend to forget this, but uh, Mitt Romney was by far the best of a very bad lot in the Republican primary process yeah, earlier this year. Right. Mm. Absolutely right. Um, <laughs> it, 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 Tom's right about uh, that given the state of the US economy, and a, a lot of it was inherited from the previous administration, no question. And there are some signs of recovery. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of anecdotal evidence now of recovery. The Dow is up, but even house prices in some states are are improving. The Republicans should be a mile in, uh, mile in front. And uh, the question is, what, what have the Republicans done mm. to, uh, to fundamentally destroy their chances mm. of, uh, uh, of this election? What's happened to their uh, talent base on Tom's point that Romney was the best of a very bad bunch? Well, is, there a, is there a, 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 a long-term decline in the Republican talent base I, I, I that think, makes them viable? I think it's the base that's the problem. There, there are capable people in the Republican Party a number of whom uh, dropped out or didn't run. Uh, Mitch Daniel out in Indiana, Tim, uh, Tim Pawlenty didn't last uh, very long, there are others. Uh, but when you have Michelle Bachman as a credible Republican uh, candidate and some of the other nonsense that went on, uh, Rich, Richard Nixon would now be regarded as a liberal in Republican ranks, Ronald Reagan as a moderate. And you, you remember that Newt Gingrich used the term moderate as a term of abuse during the, it's like European, it's a term of abuse in Republican Mm. party circles, so uh, there, there, there is a problem there. Mm. Yeah, I think there's some truth to that, but America is a centre-right country. I mean, all the available polling evidence indicates that Americans ideolo ideologically by numbers of two to one would describe themselves as conservative versus liberal. Uh, the problem is, for, from a Republican perspective, more Americans identify themselves as Democrats than Republicans. Mm. Tom, let me ask you about Wayne Swan's comments uh, yesterday about the Republican Party having t been taken over by, what do you call them, crazies and nutters, etc. Crazies and cranks. What's, yeah. your, uh, what's your view on that? Well, first of all, it was 
entirely inappropriate for Wayne Swan to intervene in what is a very delicate issue uh, in, in partisan terms in Washington on the eve of an election. Uh, Mark would remember as opposition leader uh, when uh, President Bush uh, attacked uh, Mark for his position on troops home by Christmas. I think Dick Armitage as well, the Deputy Secretary of State, also intervened. And I think the ambassador had a few things. He may, <laughs> yeah, that's right. And of course, there was outrage in the Australian community. Why should the Americans interfere in the internal affairs of Australian partisan politics? Well, not I think enough outrage. Um, yeah, well, yeah. But anyway, I ran a piece of the Australian newspaper yeah, yeah. by Michael Costello, but nevertheless, on, yeah. uh, uh, I think what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So mm. I think he was wrong on that front. But I also think he fundamentally misread the legislative dynamics in Washington. It is true that some of the more hardline conservative elements of the Tea Party are incapable of understatement and uh, they played with fire with the debt default last year. But the big issue here about the fiscal cliff is whether the Bush era tax cuts will be renewed across the board. And I would argue there is more likely to be opposition from Liberal Democrats and even President Obama mm. than there are from Conservatives mm. on getting those passed because if they're not passed, that amounts to a gigantic tax increase and that's the very last thing a sluggish US economy needs as it's trying to get out of a, mm. a long time a slump. But hard for the Demo a Democratic president to renew them. But uh, Stephen, just quickly um, to close, um, uh, can Romney win? if he wins the debates, and can he win the debates against such an eloquent and polished performer as uh, Obama? Uh, the, this election's uh, are far from over. There's no uh, question uh, about that. The debates will have an impact, uh, although Gorby Dahl once made the, the memorable observation 50 per cent of Americans no longer read newspapers, and he hoped that, that was the same 50 per cent who weren't going to vote in the <laughs> presidential election. <laughs> the, the, the presidential debates and the vice presidential debate, I think, will ha have impact. And the vice presidential debate will actually be the ideologically sharper mm -hmm. uh, uh, contest. If there's uh, an economic uh, deterioration in uh, Europe or uh, elsewhere that has, a, has an impact in the United States, that can hurt. The, uh, the administration it could hurt uh, Barack Obama and lift uh, uh, Governor Romney. The election's far from over. It's true. It's just at the moment, I think, uh, the Obama-Biden ticket has a comfortable uh, lead. In, uh, in six weeks or so, we'll find out if it's a, uh, a winning and convincing lead. Tom, is it all over? No, not at all. Um, little known fact, but in uh, late September, early October, Gallup showed that, in 1980, Gallup uh, polling showed that uh, Ronald Reagan was trailing Jimmy Carter by 10 points. And look what happened. So I'm not suggesting that Mitt Romney is uh, capable of being a Ronald Reagan, but look, a lot can happen in six weeks. Debates, the negative attack ads, and the accidents of history. Mm. Mark, who do you think is going to win? I think Obama will win. I, my experience in the States was that uh, his campaign was much better organised. I mean, the response ads were very sharp. Uh, the, 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 uh, the Romney uh, competence issue uh, is a big problem and um, the lead that's been established uh, post the conventions in all the battleground states seems to be uh, fairly strong. Uh, I'd be very surprised if uh, Romney was to out-debate uh, Obama on the available evidence and um, short of the sort of um, fluke events that uh, Stephen was talking about, the unexpected events, you'd have to say uh, you'd put your betting money on Obama at this stage. Mm. Well, he might be a long way behind at the minute, or four or five points behind. He'll have to do a Reagan to win. Reagan ended up winning that 1980 election, even though he was behind during the campaign, by 489 votes to Jimmy Carter's 49. So he'll have to get his running shoes on. That ends this special edition of Showdown. Our thanks to Stephen Loosley and Tom Switzer, and to my co-host Mark Latham. We'll be back on October 30 for another special edition of Showdown. See you then.